Welcome back to the good, the bad, and the ugly of Borderlands Red Text Guns. Today is Jacob's Snipers. Uh, last episode was Mollywan Snipers, and Jacob's are pretty similar to Mollywan, where there's kind of hit and miss and all over the board. So, like last time, I'll start off and just talk briefly about Jacob's Snipers. Jacob's Snipers have the highest base damage of all snipers and they also have the highest crit at 160 percent where others are at 100 percent. They have pretty good fire rates but bad recoil so they bounce around a little bit. So that's basically them in a nutshell and all these ones I do not have any prefixes on these this time so if you're comparing these to Molly Wands for damage note that the Molly Wand had damage prefix where these Jacobs do not. <coughs> so to start with the Hawkeye here the Hawkeye has the highest crit damage of any of the Jacobs, and I think the third highest crit damage in the game, at 580% without a critical hit accessory, 600 with one. So to compare it to the Muckamuck here, you see its base damage is more than halved, which I think is a bit too far, and you'll see why in a second. The accuracy was slightly lowered, which again just seems odd, and the other stats were raised. Um, in the end, like the, the extra fire rate is really nice on this. The extra reload speed and mag size are all great. But I would have traded all those to keep all the stats around, just don't lower the damage as much. The Muckamuck doesn't really perform badly with, it, with its base stats. So, to shoot him in the crit here... See, 7 million. So it does do more on crit. And that's good. So it does outperform the Muckamuck in a baseline there. Now when you add in... Oh, the bee's definitely going to help. Let me put on the legendary Siren Com. To get a little gun damage boost. So 9,700,000. 8 million. So it's still doing more as you add in base damage because that big crit, uh, the big crit mul multiplier. So the Hawkeye, it does more than mu the Muckamuck. Uh, on zero, I don't believe it does when, once you start stacking CA because the Muckamuck's massive base damage. And what happens there is CA's critical hit bonuses get so big that this 580 isn't as important anymore and then the massive base damage takes over. But for most characters, the Hawkeye is a better gun. So, the fact that it's going to do more damage on crit, the fact that it's got better reload, better fire rate, bigger mag size, I and mean, you can see here with the Legendary Siren on, it got up to 22. Oh, I also have a Jacob's Allegiance Relic on. So it can get pretty, pretty huge there. That's back to normal. So the Hawkeye, I, I guess I should actually say this is a good gun, a, a good red text gun. Um, the problem with it, you got to beat Vorak to get it. And Vorak's the hardest raid boss. And I don't know if this is really a worthy reward, especially paired up with the Interfacer. But in general, it's a solid red text gun. I, I think it's a pretty good way to do a red text gun. Um, I said earlier that I don't like when they just kind of change a stat and make one bigger. But when you go to extremes like this and the Lady Fist, I think that is uh, a, a pretty solid way to do a red text gun. So next we have the Godfinger. The Godfinger, I don't know if to call this a bad or ugly. I love this gun. I really, really, really love this gun, but I also have to admit it's not very great. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get the bullet split in here. So what the Godfinger does... It actually does a lot, and this is why I love it as a gun. And I'll get to why I hate it. Um, the Godfinger bullet gains damage the longer it's in air. Not distance, but time in air. So skills like velocity and accelerate make that worse. But the longer the bullet travels in air, it gains extra damage. Then, the bullet splits. And it splits in two ways. It can split over time in air... And it's kind of weird, differently map to map. It seems like DLC maps it does that, but 
vanilla maps it doesn't. I'm not sure what that's all about. Second, it can split after it hits an enemy. Why that's important, it's got penetration. So if you shoot an enemy, the bullets keep traveling, but they also split off, so now you have six bullets instead of one, and they all have full damage, which makes it very good with a B, but you have to be clever and line it up. Uh, it's got a lot of synergy with like Borer, Nth Degree, and Chain Reaction because of that. So it's got a lot of effects here when you start to add all those up. But then you run into the problem, like the Hawkeye, I'll actually compare it to the Hawkeye here, it got extremely lowered damage. But you're also going to notice that fire rate. So if you compare it, <coughs> sorry, it's a doll barrel, so if you compare it to a Calipine here, again, damage is way down. And that's because of the damage picking up at distance. The accuracy, now here's the weird part, the fire rate. They made the Godfinger a bolt action. Now with Jacob's guns, blue guns are bolt action, purple guns are not. And typically legendaries, seraphs, and pearls are based off of purple guns, not blue guns. Now all these stats line up with this purple version, but the fire rate lines up with the blue version, if I can find it here. Here you go. But the mag size does not, or the accuracy, just the fire rate. So I don't really understand what they were doing there. I This gun would be so much better if it were not. So you can see here, 510, there's no bonus damage at this range. If I can hit him in the head. So, 2,600,000. That's, I mean, you're doing half the damage at close range there. Let's see, back here. So, same damage, 5.1. So, this is still the same. Let's see if I can get it at all in this target room. Nope, still no back, not back here. So, let's see if I can sneak. No, it's still 510, so I'm not going to be able to get far away enough in this room to do it. And you can see at that point, in this game, spawns can get far away from you, but typically, this is kind of a standard length of engagement. So, one problem with this, they lower the damage too much. Second problem is the fact that it takes too long to get the multiple, uh, to get the damage upgrades for distance third problem is they made it a bolt action. And maybe before I move on to other guns, I'll just go into the bolt action rant, because this is something I really hope they address and fix in Borderlands 3, if we keep with a similar gun system. So, let's look at... Is that my... Where's my blue muckamuck? That's not a blue muckamuck. There's a blue muckamuck. So when you see, I should compare muckamucks there. Blue muckamucks, all same parts. Now, purple guns should be better than blue guns, yes. But bolt action should be the one exception. Because if you're going to lower that fire rate from 2.6 to 0 you need a damage increase to make up for that, to make the gun worthwhile. There's no reason to use blue Jacob's guns in this game. They're just terrible. I mean, it's not often you're using blue over purple, but usually a blue to a purple isn't this much of a downgrade. You know, all the stats are kind of slightly lower. Like, you can see the accuracy is slightly lower. The mag size down by one. The reload speed's the same. The damage is a little bit lower. If they're going to do the bolt action thing, a blue Jacob sniper should probably actually have <coughs> more damage than a purple. And I know that sounds weird, but if they're going to go with the bolt action thing, they should do that. At least in my opinion. Um, I don't mind bolt action. I don't mind playing with them. I mind the fact that they don't get the damage to make it worthwhile having that fire rate. I kind of like the idea of a slow firing gun that you have to hit your shots with, you know, an extreme skill based gun. But don't make them a pearl. 
if this if the Godfinger just had a little more base damage and was uh had the fire rate of a muckamuck at two point six or of a hawkeye three point one, this would be an awesome gun. I mean it's got so many cool red text abilities. Again, between the bullet split, the penetration, the more damage while it flies through the air, and let's be honest, this is one of the best looking guns in the game. I mean it just looks amazing. That's such a good paint job on it. But they made it just not very good. I mean, you can make it good if you know what you're doing. This is the first gun I think I ever got three kills with on Chain Reaction from firing one bullet, and that was a 5 out of 5 in Chain Reaction. It really opened my eyes to what that skill was. So this gun has potential, but it just takes a little bit too much to make it usable in everyday play, and that's coming from someone who absolutely is in love with this gun. So I think I've spent enough time on the Godfinger. Actually, I should just spill these out here. That'd be faster. So next, we are going to move on to the legendaries. So I'll get the Skull Masher, and then we'll move down to Blues. Maybe I'll go to the Cobra after that. Actually, I should have held on to this, because that is not the right one. Where'd my Muckamuck go? There we go. Wow. So, the Skull Masher. This is another, I think, really good... Not really good. Good. Legendary. Um, so you can see here, it's based off the Muckamuck. And what they did well here, they didn't mess with the base stats outside of accuracy, which they had to. Now, the damage per pellet was lowered significantly, but since you have five pellets, you still have more damage output. The trade-off is you need to aim very carefully and land all five pellets on a crit spot. And then you do more damage than with the muckamuck. And that's why the accuracy is less. There's a spread. You can't make it as tight. So, so 9.8 million, 6.3 million. Now, the problem with it is when you get back here... Oh, 9.8 million. I'm still able to do it. See, 7.9, 5.6, 9.8, that's a good one. So, it's not as consistent. And once you get further away, it gets really hard to land them all. And if you fire too fast with this, you're not going to land them all. Did I see a 14 million? So this gun has a ton of potential. One of the few drawbacks is there's really no characters in Borderlands 2 outside of Zero that can increase accuracy, and that's how you really get the most of this gun. You know, in the pre-sequel they made it better because I believe they added a pellet to it, which makes it even stronger. And there's a lot of characters in the pre-sequel that can increase accuracy with Jack, Aurelia, Nisha. So part of it is maybe just the character skill trees don't match this gun as well in this game, but uh, this is a really good red text gun. It's really solid. Uh, it's not too hard of a farm if it doesn't drop through the floor, although I've never had that happen to me personally, so I think that's a little out of proportion. But um, yeah, the Skull Masher, the big thing is to get that accuracy tighter so you can land them all at a little more distance because it has limited range as a sniper, but in this game that's not the worst thing in the world because... A lot of snipings at fairly close ranges. So now we go to the Cobra. And since this is blue, like the rest of our guns we're going to go after, it's bolt action. And the problem, once again, and with a dial barrel, it just doesn't have the damage to make it worthwhile. Um, and this is another gun I absolutely love. I think this is a really good gun with Maya because she boosts the splash damage and I should actually back up and go over the red text before I go too far but you can see with here they left the base stats alone they increased the damage slightly and they increased the accuracy slightly so they've done a good job with the Cobra in general compared to what it's based off of and then what they did is they gave it a big splash damage and that's 80% So you can see 1.7 million. So on a crit, 
5.9. Let's see this. Oh, I should probably shoot him in the head. And there we go. 4.8. So, it does pretty good. And that splash radius is huge, so it can hit a lot of enemies. And the fact that it's 80% on top of a Jacob sniper rifle, even a low-powered one, that's pretty good damage. This is get over a million damage with a damage accessory. So that's pretty solid, especially if you have them slag and all that. You can do some good damage. The problem is it's just too slow. So this is one of those guns that you can be really good in true vault hunter mode. It's okay in UVHM. It, at OP8, it's kind of one of those snipers that needs a B. Uh, like I said, Maya's the, kind of the one exception that can really use this because she can boost the splash damage. Uh, it doesn't get grenade boost, so like Axton can't really do that, and it's too slow for zebra, Zero with uh, CA. So it's really only good on Maya. And that's if a gun's only good on one character, it's not very good. So the next two here, I might as well go with both of these. See my Hyperion. We're getting down there. The Buffalo and the Elephant Gun. And that's the Blue Makamak. So, I'll start off with my favorite of the two. Again, an awesome looking gun. Sir Hammerlock's Elephant Gun. So pretty. Actually, all the Hammerlock guns look pretty awesome. Now with this one, basically, it doesn't have a sight, which limits the uh, accessories you can get on so you can't get a damage accessory on it, which kind of sucks, and a few others that you can't get. But when you compare the stats here, you can see everything was lowered, but the damage was way up there. Uh, less accuracy, but you took that bolt action fire rate of 0.6 and gone down to a 0 0.4. Ugh. That is tough. Uh, the reload at 4.6 is tough, and especially since the mag size is even smaller. Um, and it's based off of a blue gun again. So you can see here, 9.4 4.8. So it blows this away, but uh, let's see, where's my muck -a muck I should have kept that. Now let's just take a purple muck -a muck Now I know that's a blue rarity, but 6.3. So you are doing more than a muck -a muck You're doing a lot of damage with this thing. Also, cool reload anima animation. Um, the problem is if you miss a shot, The amount of time between shots is low, whereas in the muck-a-muck, where I put it, so even with that recoiling to bounce a few off, you can do more damage with the muck-a-muck on those big enemies. And that's why the damage of this is, even though it's huge, you know, 1.8 million, it's just not enough. And that's the sad thing about these bolt-action guns. I love the concept, and I like going around with this gun. Maybe I'll do a video of me just playing with this gun at some point. I really, really like this gun. I can't emphasize that enough. I love how it looks. I love the play of it. I mean, even the animation. The animation while you're scoped in, I think, is so cool. But it's just not enough. So then we go to the buffalo. So again, compared to the muck, -muck now this one, they didn't mess with the base stats, um, except for low in accuracy a little bit. They left you at least at f 0.5 fire rate, which, you know, isn't the greatest. But when you compare this to the elephant gun, the damage isn't there either. So this one, at least you have iron sights. The the elephant gun, you do not. So seven million. So it's still outperforming the muckamuck in straight damage. 
and that's good but once again it's bolt action guns are just too damn slow for most people um, they're absolutely terrible on zero because they're so slow you can't really stack critical ascension or rising shot and so much of his DPS so zero just really goes away from them you know you can play with them with Maya and Axton if you want kind of for fun if you like that style but they're not nice. really that good and even though those damage numbers were huge they're not enough and that's the problem with all bolt action rifles in this game uh, every single one of them just the godfinger the cobra the elephant gun the buffalo it's not enough and it's just that simple so they I I hope they do one of two things with Borderlands 3 so please Gearbox if you're listening if you're reading the thread that we're gonna say the same point Don and I know a lot of zero players will back me up actually zero players will probably just say burn them and send them all to hell but if you're gonna keep the bolt action rifles and I know there are fans of them you know troubled we're looking at you here just make them powerful enough to be good at the end game that's that's what I'm asking or you know what leave their damage where it is and give them more crit I'd be fine with that too just something to give them an extra kick to make them worthwhile so on to the last one which once again is a bolt action with a Hyperion barrel also gearbox stop making <laughs> Hyperion barreled non-Hyperion sniper red text guns. No one likes Hyperion barrels. They're bad. That's the same thing with the Buffalo rifle. I don't know why that thing has a Hyperion barrel. It's beyond me. So, Anyways, the Trespasser. So this gun shoots through shields. That's its special effect. Another bolt action. You can see there. 4 million damage. Not that impressive. It does less damage than the gun it's based off of. So they lower the damage, they lower the fire rate, because that's a thing. And some people love this gun because it has exactly two purposes in the game. Yes, two. You can use it with a B to kill the chief, or with Sal as the offhand, and you can use it to remove Pete's face mask. That's it. That's all this gun is good for. It's not good for just regular play in the game. It's terrible because the damage isn't high enough and it's a bolt action. So it's a god awful gun that has two purposes. They both happen to be raid bosses, so you see it in a lot of backpacks, but a red text gun like the this of the Logan's gun, I absolutely despise if they just don't have any real use outside of two very niche things. Make the gun playable. You know, why do you have to lower the damage on the Trespasser? It's not like a blue bolt action Jacob's Hyperion barreled sniper is some deadly one shot one kill weapon that would break the game if you just gave it the ability to shoot through shields. Still wouldn't be that great. So. Jacob's kind of like Molly Wan had quite a bit more fail than success here. Um, the only really good ones were the Skull Masher and the Hawkeye. Um, outside of that, you know, the Godfinger is oh so close if they just didn't mess with the stats. And pretty much everything else is bolt action. And that's the main problem with the most Jacob's Red Tex guns. The only two good ones are not bolt action. All the other ones were kind of a big fail, so Jake Gearbox, figure out what you're going to do with the bolt action stuff, and I'll go over this later with the other ones, but you guys had the same problem with your Unforgiven and Rex and all the other slow fire and Jacob's guns. You didn't give them the damage to make it worthwhile using a slow firing gun. So, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed um, I just want to re-emphasize one more time because I was kind of negative on these guns. I love some of these guns. I absolutely love playing with these guns. And maybe just kind of prove that to kind of 
make this a bit happier, I'll uh, do some run-throughs of these guns to show you guys that I honestly really do have fun with these, especially this baby right here. So pretty. So that's it. I will see everyone later, and uh, you know, hop over to the forums, let us know what you think of these, give us your input, and let's hope for the best. Thank you. Bye.